For my next project, something a little bit smaller, something a little more fun, we're gonna be converting this trailer into a mobile solar generator. I don't know what the ultimate end product of this is gonna be, but I know it's gonna have solar panels and I know it's gonna have batteries. If it ends up just being literally an emergency solar generator for me to use in a hurricane when the power goes down to get air conditioning till I can sleep at night, then that's good enough for me. What would you do with a 14 foot trailer with solar panels and batteries? Now, I am excited to be working with Vader batteries on this build. They provided me with a huge 48 volt, 5,000 kilowatt hour server rack battery that we'll be pairing with another server rack battery to give us 10,000 kilowatt hours in here. So thanks to Vader for sponsoring this video. You know, I got some leftover solar panels from my recent customer build. I went ahead and ordered a whole new set of Victron components. So we're gonna do an inverter 48 volts. Just a little bit preview of what we're gonna be doing, but first of all, I gotta get this cleaned out. faderpower.com got our 48 volt battery here quite heavy make sure you do a team lift in my case i am the team it's got handlebars right on the front that's nice and it's convenient certainly well packaged all right well, it's certainly the nicest looking battery I've ever had. This thing looks awesome. It's very well constructed. I think I will pop the top here just to take a look on the inside. But right off the bat, we've got our breaker, which is nice. It's not a fuse. There's a breaker on here, 125 amp, touchscreen, two connections for positive and negative. So you can do parallel connections, things like that. These handles fold in and out. So 51.2 volts at 100 amp hours means we've got 5,120 watt hours which is a lot of power in this thing now i've got two of these and we've got a rack we've got a server rack that i'm going to be putting up towards the front of the trailer here before i assemble the rack and get the other battery unboxed i want to go ahead and pop this open we'll just take a quick look inside see what's going on here not a full disassemble but i am curious as someone who builds their own batteries just what's going on on the inside here all right we got the top off here nothing really stands out to me other than the fact that it looks very well constructed Everything's tight. This is your BMS system here. We've got our temperature sensor mounted right on the side where the cells are underneath this protective cover. And everything looks nice and neat and clean under here. I do really like the breaker system we've got here. Rather than dealing with the fuse, makes it quite a bit easier. If it does trip, I don't have to open this thing up and put a new fuse in. I just need to, that basically probably acts as your master on off switch as well. And uh, I got my voltmeter here because I wanted to see what the state of charge was on this, but I guess that's unnecessary because we have a built-in screen, which is telling us right now that we're at 53%, 52.7 volts. But since I busted it out, may as well just take a look. 52.6. So the screen's got the current, the voltage, the temperature, time to empty based on the current load. We can turn on and off the charge and discharge. Shows us the number of cycles. And on page three, we've got uh, individual cell voltages, which is handy if we're trying to figure out if there's a problem with one of those cells. Pretty cool. Well, I think it's time to get this racked and stacked.
And in my opinion, I would probably just make a rack out of wood. Kind of convenient because it's got wheels on it and stuff. And these ones do have uh, uh, stands. So they'll be stationary inside the moving vehicle here. 102 pounds, 46 kilograms. This thing says it can support 600 kilograms. To no fault of the Vader battery at all, I had to grind off a couple bolts because they got uh, stripped when I tried to put them in here. Still puzzled as to why there's a slot on the bottom but you can't actually use it. That's a little weird to me. But we'll go ahead and get this tip back over, get the second one. Ugh. I should probably install the actual brackets on there first. Okay, let's try this again with the actual brackets. Once I get it in place, we can get these stoppers down so it doesn't roll. If I ever want to or need to, for whatever reason, I can roll this thing out of the trailer. Looks like they ship these at 50% state of charge. We've got 53 here, 53 there. And these were shipped separately, not even from the same website. The consistency is a good thing. That's a good sign. That's all I'm saying. Now we can go ahead and get some of our other components hooked up. Get the inverter on the wall, solar charge controller, smart shunt, that kind of stuff. We're gonna be doing two solar charge controllers in this. We're gonna put all six of the remaining panels that I have, and those are 450 watts each. So we're gonna have one set of four going into this, because this can handle a maximum of 2000 watts. This will pick up the other 900 watts. Make sure when you guys are buying your solar charge controllers, the math doesn't really add up. You don't get the maximum wattage of 150 volts at 35 amps. These have their own individual max wattage based on the battery voltage. So at 48 volts, you get 2000 watts out of this. At 24 volts, it's even less. At 12 volts, it's even less. So again, you get more efficiency out of the 48 volt systems uh, because you don't have to pay for as big of a com uh, charge controllers and other components along with the cables. This giant charge controller on a 24 volt system is only going to give you a thousand watts. And at 12 volts, you only get 500 watts. 12 volt systems are really, this is not cheap either. So yeah, 48 volt superiority. Another good reason to go with the Vader server rack battery. Multi plus. Whoa. I mean, these things are heavy, but after dealing with those batteries, this is like nothing. What about like right there? Right there. Center aligned or top aligned? We got top aligners in the chat or we got uh, center aligners? I'm just sitting here looking at this paint and the fact that it gets so dirty so easily and I'm like, I should put some carpet or something else in here. Time to find out how much weight trailer roof can support. Watch me just fall right through. Okay, all right, it's pretty solid. It's pretty clean up here actually. It's in good condition, it doesn't leak or anything. I'm just gonna get some of the big debris off of here. Um, well, that would have been funny. It is bare metal and it's very clean, so we'll have no problem with our Sika Flex really sticking. Now for layout, I've decided that even though I'm gonna have a few inches of overhang on the front, I'm gonna do four panels all side by side. I'm not gonna do a grid two by two. For this project, we're using the last six Alexis Solar 450 watt panels we've got. These are 75 inches long, 44 and a half inches wide. Six of these are gonna give us a grand total of theoretical maximum of 1800 plus 900, 2700 watts. There we go, random cut number 363. So 
So my charge controller handles up to 150 volts. These are 34, 35 volts each. So 35 times four, like just under 150. This is gonna be interesting. Panels are up, mounted, and uh, we just gotta run some cables now. So I've got our negative here. We're gonna run this underneath all the way up to the front where I'm gonna have a gland. I got two 30 foot runs of cable here. And I uh, made the ends myself. With the solar stuff, it's pretty easy. You can get a kit, take a regular cable like this and actually attach the MC4 connectors, the solar connectors on the ends. Super cheap, it's much uh, cheaper probably to buy cable and the connector kit separately. And then you have a connector kit in case you need to cut one or splice, make one longer, then you can always make your own connectors to do so. Just kind of work it in from the side. I can't really feed it up the center all the way up because it's just not straight enough. The cable's not straight enough to do that. So we are sufficiently connected. Turn on our inverter with shore power. I'm in the shop still, so I don't have any solar power yet, but we'll pull this thing out into the sun tomorrow. Hopefully there's sun. The inverter will then charge our batteries, which are only at 50% right now. But if we leave that plugged into shore power overnight, I'm only gonna attach one battery because we need to charge these to full independently. We've got power on the charge controller. The circuit is energized. Let's go ahead and just check the screen here real quick to validate that we're at 53%. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the shore power. This screen almost eliminates the need for any kind of uh, monitoring interface because you're going to be easily, you can easily find out exactly what's happening here. Currently we have 27 amps going in, one hour, 42 minutes to full. I mean, very useful information right on the screen right there. 
I definitely appreciate that. So we'll have a full battery tomorrow morning and we can start testing it out. See you then. Right now, we are on standby at 100% capacity. And what that means is we're ready to finally test out some loads. The first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna drill another hole through the front wall and then we're gonna install one of our outdoor outlet covers. So final stage of this battery testing process, we're gonna see the capacity of the Vader battery by plugging in, I've got a smart meter plugged into my GFCI outlet out here that I installed. We're gonna plug in a little space heater. Well, I say little, it runs about 1400 watts. We're gonna run until the battery's dead. It's gonna be a few hours, but at the end, we'll be able to get a reading on my phone here of the full output. Turn this on. I'm gonna put this down on the concrete because concrete is not flammable. The second box over uh, where it says power, we do have 1400 watts coming in right now, going out rather. So we're gonna let that run until the battery's dead and then we'll uh, check the capacity. Okay, we're back the next day. Our battery has completely run out. Our monitor is off. Everything in the trailer is off. There's no more power. Battery's empty. It's not plugged into short power or anything. So in order to get a reading off of that, you need to get some power back in there. And rather than just plug it into shore power, what I'm gonna do is actually, we're gonna pull it out into the sun because we finally got some sun here. We'll let that energize the system. We'll take a reading off that to see the capacity. And then we'll see how much solar we're getting in on that single charge controller. I'm gonna go ahead and turn our solar disconnects to uh, on position. Still working on the lighting. So this is what it looks like when you fully discharge your Vader battery. We see we got a 0% capacity and a notification to recharge battery there, which is exactly what we would expect to see. Solar panels are connected. We are currently charging at 1400 watts, pretty good. Let me go ahead and check our meter since we don't have power. The inverter is energizing that smart plug that I had. So the energy usage for yesterday was 4.8 kilowatt hours, which is pretty much exactly what I would expect because although the battery itself has 5.1 kilowatt hours, it's not 100% efficient going through the inverter. There are losses in the inverter, so you're not gonna get 5.1 kilowatt hours at the outlet. You got a 90% or so efficiency rating going through that inverter. So about our battery passes our capacity test. Our portable solar generator is now functional, but it's not 100% complete. We still have to add two more solar panels to the other side. We got a lot of other stuff to do on the inside. Shout out again to Vader for providing me with a sample battery and sponsoring this video. If you guys want to catch your own, links are in the description below. I checked the prices right now and they are currently, as of posting this video, are on a really awesome sale. Gets a thumbs up, two thumbs up from the Techno Barbarian. I'll definitely be using some of these in my future builds. Easy to work with, super convenient with the screens, high capacity, put it in a server rack, set it and forget it. Appreciate you guys watching this one. I'll see you on the next one. Techno Barbarian out.